So here I have Centroid uh, Acorn digitizing, and I'm going to go over this with you because nobody really goes into depth on this. So I'm hoping that this video is useful for some of you. Now, I had to do a lot of trial and error, and there wasn't much help on the forums. I really was left to kind of swim alone. There isn't any real videos other than showing off how well it works. And how well it works is really gonna come down to a few things. It's gonna come down to the resolution that you're scanning and the quality of the scanner that you're using. In this case, I'm on a router and uh, I could not have my scanner and my spindle, so I had to make a separate bracket that's adjustable up and down. Give me some extra clearance. Real slick setup. Uh, just make sure you're, you're homing before you start any project. Now, let's go over to the settings. Now we have the centroid settings here. Now you're, I'm in millimeters, so uh, not to confuse that for 145 inches. So my X length or width is 145 millimeters from here to here. So we wanna be able to cover the length of the part plus four millimeters, because I wanna clear the edge of the part. And um, you don't wanna go so far out that it starts to try to scan uh, you know, my vacuum uh, spoil plate here, I, I, I don't want to scan that. I just want to scan the part itself. So, I did a one millimeter step over rate. That's the resolution. So that's gonna, in X, Y, and Z, it's gonna move one millimeter each time. So that's a pretty good resolution. I don't see any reason to uh, knock that down any less. I think that's excessive resolution and it's just gonna draw out the time it takes to scan. So in this case, I have my Y width at 455. So my Y, uh, I'm starting about three millimeters on this side and I'm ending about three millimeters on this side. So it's gonna do some open air scanning, which is okay. Now, something that's important here is the Z maximum depth, 3.5 millimeters. Now, for most of you, you might wanna go four, maybe five, maybe six millimeters. Set your height higher. Now, what's gonna happen like this is stamped steel. If I didn't know where my highest point was, and, and you can just slide over, uh, jog over, and see where your highest point is, and then maybe go up, um, you know, a few thousandths, and that could be your your that could be your homing point, and then your depth is going to be preferably no deeper than the actual plate itself, so you don't start scanning other surfaces. The benefit I have here with this rubber foam here is that my sensor can go down into it a little bit and it does not pick it up. So it can actually slide and, and, and drag in, into that and I'm not uh, scanning that as a part. So it's real critical because uh, if you hit a high point, it will cancel your digitizing right in the middle of it. And you do not want that to happen. So make sure that you have your depth uh, set properly. There isn't really a good video out there on this. I hope that this helps some of you and uh, take some of the confusion out of it because I tell you what, uh, I spent uh, probably a couple weeks uh, messing around with this. Nobody could give me any real information and I had to spend the time figuring it out myself. And if you do scans with low resolution, you're gonna be very unhappy with what you get and uh, the quality of those scans. Now, in another video, um, I will show how to take these scans. Um, you can either use the G-code and cut out the same part uh, using Centroid, or you can take those scans, you can convert them into a point cloud file and export them to Fusion 360 and make sure that uh, all your point clouds are correct and that your measurements are correct before you go cutting a... Um, an expensive piece of material and then find out your, you know, a millimeter, two millimeters uh, less width. Uh, one of the things that's been mentioned to me and I haven't uh, uh, been able to confirm yet is that if you're using an eighth inch probe, you have to use an eighth inch end mill if you're gonna uh, go ahead and cut it right off of Centroid. 
So uh, I tend to not like to use that small of an end mill. It takes a long time to cut. I'd rather be able to just plop in a uh, six uh, millimeter end mill and have a, you know, rip that outside real fast and then go uh, do a tool change and then do all the holes. Uh, and then of course, uh, I'll be using a spoil board at the time. Uh, with vacuum, you will not, if you're doing the same thing, you do not want to put your holes all the way through. So you want to make sure you leave enough skin that you don't lose your vacuum. And then you'll have to either manually go through or, or, or find another method to uh, uh, finish those holes. So I hope uh, again that this video helps you out and uh, you don't have to go through all the headaches that I did.